sis are also in the house, so let us welcome them for being here. God bless you for coming. God bless you for coming. And all our members are also here, so let us welcome our members for coming to church today. God bless you for coming to church. Amen. It's my singular honor to introduce one to you, uh, Dignes Grace Bobby and Sam. She used to be here before, but she had a transfer and went to 10 and PIWC. So let us go to the family. family. Today it has been the honor and privilege of hosting our own elder, a man whom wherever he is, you cannot keep him. No, nothing, you cannot keep him. His zeal for the work of God is so amazing that he does what you've not even assigned him to do because he knows he's doing it for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. He's doing it for his father. He takes it serious. Amen. I remember one time at all night he was teaching about how God planted Adam in the garden and he commanded Adam to till the land and he was explaining it to me. It was amazing. He, at all night it was amazing. And I learned something good out of it. And he's taught us a lot. And today it is my honor to introduce Elder Andrews, who will soon have sat to you as you take the word of God. Tell us what you do. Sorry, he's at 10 at the IWC. I forgot to say that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. If I say praise the Lord, better shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed to be here? Yes. I thought the president said we should occupy the front seat. Are you afraid of the front seat? If I were you, I would be there. But when the anointing flows from the top, it goes down before we go back to the back door. Receive your seat, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Long time no see. Wow. <laughs> God bless you for being here today, sis. Give me half five. Give me half five. Sandra, I've seen you a long time. Give me some smile and God will bless you. Stop for that. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm happy to be here one more time. You see, we are still a body together. Yes. It's just a transfer to another location. That's all. Uh, after all, what? Um, we are still here to preach in the same spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, are you happy to be here? Yes. As Prisade said, I went to LP and the reason turned out. Just went to help you. I want to be with you now. Amen. Amen. It's all by His grace. Amen. Amen. Today, God sent me here to bring a word to you. It's a powerful word that He said I should tell you. The name, or somebody will say, the title, be. Today, I'm going to teach you some stuff. Yeah? So, write them down. I'm going to do some more readings. The grace. Used, abused, and refused. Say it after me. The grace used, refused, and abused. Which one of these three is applicable to you today? Most of the times we say in P, yes, I don't want to say, we don't want to say. We are under grace, but we are not under the law. Christians of these days are using this quotation and doing all sorts of life things that they like to do. Expecting to go to heaven at the end of the day. Because after all, the Bible says, we are saved by the grace. We are saved by grace. We are under the grace. Oh, we are saved by the grace. Hmm. God said, I should come and tell you today that some time ago, some people used the grace. For example, Noah. The Bible says, Noah found grace before God, and he was saved in the flood. Abraham did the same thing. Most people outside there, they have refused God's grace. But we who embrace the grace of God, we have abused it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to teach. I'm not going to preach. I don't like preaching. So bear with me. It's much more. The question is today, are we really under the grace? If yes, are we really saved by the grace? Let me give you some background. Right now, if I say that when you hear the Ghana National Anthem, run for your life. Hmm? Ghana National Anthem, run for your life. Our brother is from Nigeria, right? 
So if I see it's from Ghana. From Ghana? Yes. Oh wow. I thought uh, God bless you, baby. We are all the same people anyway. Ta 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 ta. Will you still sit down? No. What will you do? Okay. You rise around for your life. But if I say you will sit down there because it's not the national anthem. You get me now? Good. So anytime you want to learn something about your destination, check your back. If you have this thing, I want to throw it at a long distance, my hand will go back first before I do what I stretch it forward. Our destination as Christians is where? Where's our final destination? Heaven, Heaven right? If you want to go to heaven, take a step back so that you can prepare yourself forward. You know that guy went after a really 100 meter race, we do this. Who is that? He goes down first because he propelled. So I'm going to take you back. Amen. Amen. We are the dispensation whereby we are grace every now and then. Some people think when the judgment day comes, that's where Jesus Christ will give us the grace. When he starts from Brussels and coming with the judgment, he will line people up. So, oh, Charlie, I'm saving you by the grace. I'm saving you by the grace. But then we forget that the grace has already been given to us. Amen. Amen. When a thief is going to steal, he says, God, protect me that they don't catch me. He goes and steal, and they don't catch him. He says, oh, yam, yam, don't me. God has graced me. Check something from Ezra chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Yeah. Say now therefore, if you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. Who was he spoken to? No. Who was God spoken to here? From who? After he delivered from Egypt, he was speaking to the Israelites. He said, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of? 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 So God selected which people? Israel. Watch out. We are going back. I told you. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 1 to 3. God told them, at the end of every seven days, call that year a release year. If anybody owes you, that seventh year, don't go and call it that thing. My name is free. They are happy. Say, wow, I'm going to be free, though. So if I owe you, I'll be hiding. Seven years time, hey, I'm free. Verse 2. And this is a form of the release. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor shall release it. He shall not require of his neighbor what he has borrowed from him. But... What's the yellow word there? Foreigner. But who? Foreigner. A foreigner. If we are Ghanaians, Nigerians, or whatever, but we are not the nation Israel, are we not foreigners? We are, right? So if, if please come. Ephraim is a Ghanaian, I'm an Israelite. Hey, now, this guy is getting big old. <laughs> and then, he owes me, he has not paid. The seventh year, he is not part of the roots, right? Because he is what? He is he is a foreigner. The Bible say, require of him just an day. Hook the back of his, his trousers, even the knee will never touch the ground. What he pays you consider. I'm giving you a picture here. Why does God say among the Israelites, don't take it back? But the foreigner, take it back. Is God being partial here? I'm giving you a picture. Hold on. Psalm 147, take note. Because if you don't take note, you'll not be noticed. Psalm 147, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says, He declares his words to Jacob, and his statutes and judgment he gave to who? Nay. Read the Bible well. He gave to who? You know how Bible's with you? Then read with me there. And, uh, they, uh, they are not appearing well. But open your Bible, they are all in. Psalm 147, verse 19 and 20. The Bible says, God declares his words to Jacob and his judgments he gave to Israel. <coughs> he has not dealt like this in, with any nation before. <clears throat> As for his judgments, they have not been known. 
Why will God give his rules only to Israel? And we the foreigners not. Are you getting something here? Yeah. First, he chose Israel and said, You are my special people. And then he told them, If you owe one another the 70, I don't go and take it back. But when the foreigner chose him. And now Psalm 47 say He gave all his commandments unto Israel. What about us? That's where your grace came from. Now, watch this. The Bible says, after everything has been done, the people were in the land of the promised land. They arose our Savior Jesus Christ. He came and confirmed all these things that God told them. When they were in the wilderness. So once upon a time, Jesus selected 12 disciples. He sent them to preach and heal the sick and cast out demons. He says, told them, while you are going, don't pass by any Gentile place. Matthew chapter 15. Don't go by the way of the Gentiles or even to the Samaritan cities. But go straight to the house of the Lordship of Israel. Jesus came and said the same thing. Why? Does God not love us? We thought Jesus Christ came and saved all of us. But when he sent his disciples to go on a journey, he said, when you go, don't enter into the uh, Gentile cities. Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. But go directly to the household of Israel. Is Jesus discriminating here? See, you are all quiet. Read the Bible, Matthew 5 10. Who can stand up and read for me? Matthew 5, mm -hmm. um, Matthew 10, verse 5. Yeah, 10, 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth mm -hmm. and commanded them. Commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. The Gentiles are foreigners. And into the city of the Samaritans. Don't go there. Why should we go there? But go rather to where? To the lost sheep of or the house of Israel. Amen. Amen. You see where we are coming from? From Egypt <laughs> to the desert, God said, I've chosen you. He gave them their loss. Many years passed. Our Christ came. He said, disciples, I'm sending you. <coughs> Don't go to any place among the Gentiles, but go straight to the household of, of Israel. He, is Jesus discriminating here? Did he really come for us? Watch, we are getting somewhere. Again, March 22, 24. Write some notes. When you know your history, you know where you are going. When I used to be a, a, a boy at the grade school, whenever I want to go and play football, my mother said, you want to go? You can go, but watch the kitchen before you go. But before you come, there will be nothing there for you. So if you want to go to heaven, check your history. Amen. Amen. Matthew 24, 21, Jesus said, there was a woman who came and said, God, Jesus Christ, please save my daughter. She is demon-possessed. Heal her for me. What reply Jesus gave? He bothered and bothered and bothered Jesus. And the disciples said, Jesus, tell this woman to go. He's making too much noise. The 22 said, And behold, a woman of where? Canaan. Canaan. He specified where the woman was coming from. He wasn't an Israelite. He was a foreigner or a Gentile. He came to Jesus to beg him for mercy. Why wrong? Or why? Because the daughter was sick. Verse 24, I'm jumping. <coughs> Jesus answered to him, to her and said, I was not sent to you guys, but except to the lost sheep of where is right. The second time, Jesus was emphasizing the same point. First he said, when you go to preach the good news, when you go to come to repentance, so that they can get access to heaven, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Ghanaians. Don't go to the Sudanese or the Samarians or whatever. But go straight to the house of Israel. Somebody came and said, God, Jesus, have mercy upon me. He said, I will never give the food that people are supposed to eat to dogs. He referred to the gentle woman as a dog. That's why we see it in tree in our diet. Jesus was being discriminating here or insulting here. No. I'm building a case. Follow me gently. Are you here? Yes. So you know where you are coming from? Yes. Good. 
And then, one upon a time, somebody make a mistake. Say a mistake. A mistake. A mistake. A mistake. Ah. When people are boxing, and the opponent miss a blow, the other one take advantage and hit it. Bang! Score. Football, the same thing. Penalties. As I'm wearing, <laughs> you miss it, and the opponent will kick it. So another man's mistake is another man's profit. We were once Gentiles, but those who Jesus came for, they did not believe in him. So the Bible says, he came to his own, read after me, but his own received him not. But to those who believe him and his name, he gave them the power to become what? So if Israel had accepted Jesus, where will you, will you and I be? And they are the grace refused. You get the story now? So God said, as for you Israel, you are my prized possession. Nothing can be compared unto you. You are a holy nation. Hey, you are peculiar people. Wow, you are mine forever. They said, no. Jesus was sent to them. Go and preach to these people with their, their heart as, as hard as stone. Let them repent. <coughs> Don't go to the Gentiles. They say, no. Somebody who believed in him came and said, Master, Rabbi, have mercy upon my daughter. She is sick. Jesus said, I'm not here to give the good food for my people of Israel to dogs to eat. You see what is going on here? So, the Bible says that he came to his own. John chapter 1 verse 11. Write that one. It's your key point. It's the mistake the Jews did. That granted you and I the access to Christ. He said, he was in the world. And the world was made through him. And the world did not even know him. Read with me the yellow one. He came to his own. Who, was his, who were his own? The Israelites. Did they receive him? No. We continue. And his own did not receive him. Hey, but read the Ghanaians. Read the Sudanese. Read the foreigners. Read the Gentiles. That he said, don't go and preach to them. To read that we received him. To us. What did he give? The power or the right to become the child of God. Amen. Another man's food is another man's poison. So we profit from them. Good. We were not born of flesh and blood. As I have my daughter Christabel, we did something, nobody was there, and now she's a production of that. <laughs> that one was not what God intended. But spiritually, God gave birth to you. Amen. So, I'm taking a step back. We call something grafting in agriculture. When a tree is there, and maybe the seed of one particular species is dying out, we can cut a piece of that tree and we fix into that existing tree. The picture on the right. This is another branch for another tree. We can put that branch into this one and then we tie it up. During some few weeks, this branch here will start having leaves. You get that? We call that one grafting in agriculture. Okay. So we were once that. Israel was once this. But because they refused the grace, they were all chopped <coughs> down. And we, who were Gentiles, we were grafted in. And that's where we are. That is what we call grace. Amen. This is what we call grace. So if somebody says, how are you? By the grace of God, I'm fine. Of course. But this is your origin. And if you understand this, then you know where you are going. Then you can know that even a tree with branches, you could be chopped off. That's what you said. say. If a tree does not bear fruit, it does what? It will chop you off. You are grafted in. What was wrong with your papa? How do you know it's a daddy? You are making noise. You are not part of it. Mm. When we read from Deuteronomy, you saw it. As well as you heard it. He says himself, said it. You are not part. But because you have received him, you have been grafted into it like that. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? 
Amen. Now you know your history. Yeah. Then let's get to your destination. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 11 verse 17 says, And if some of the branches were broken off, he is using here a tree as a figure of speech. I don't want to rewind the tape back to Genesis. Otherwise, I will say, God said to them, the, the tree in the midst of the garden, don't eat. There were how many trees there? There were two. <laughs> the Bible says, after, after they have eaten, they were sad. God called the angels to come and protect the other tree. The tree of life. That's the one you see just now. So we are now grafted into the tree of life. So the Jewish people or the Israelites, they were, they were broken off branches. Romans chapter 11 is saying, I didn't write the Bible. And you, you, and you being a white holy tree were grafted in among them. And, we, and then we became partaken of the root of fatness. So, we do not have to boast. Hey, me an elder, what's Hey, I'm a pastor. Hey, I'm a man of God. Don't boast. Know how, my, how long I'm in the church? I was born in the church. I know the constitution of the church. Yeah. Don't boast. You are not part of Now come on. And so what? Now we are dreaming of yourself. You were useless. I It You were crafted in. Say craft. Yes. Verse 19 says, So you say then, branches were broken off that I may be crafted in. Well said. Hmm? Mm -hmm. We continue. So like we read in John, those who received them, Jesus' name, you were crafted into him. But there's one thing that Christians we are making a mistake. Here's where the abuse of the grace comes from. Read with me. First John chapter 1, verse 3 and 2. He said, Beloved, now we are the children of God. But the Bible says, those that believe in his name, he gave them the right to become God's children. Are you not God's children? Oh, are you not? Yes. Are you God's child? Yes. Are you God's child? Yes. Yeah, listen to this. <laughs> he said, we are now God's children. You put a semicolon there. Anytime you read the Bible, we come across semicolon, brother. Don't rush to make a conclusion. I say don't rush to make a conclusion. If you look at a semicolon, one full stop at the top, one comma at the bottom. Is that what you see? Full stop means, hey, fool, my friend, stop. Take it easy. Relax. The comma say, pause, and continue. But here, there's a combination of the two. Are you fully stopping me or you're coming me? There's a combination there. Read the sentence, that's for those next. The next one says, it has not yet been re be what? Be revealed. You are a son of God, yes. But you are not yet been revealed. It didn't even be yet. It's just a name that you have. I'm a Ghanaian. If I put my passport there, I am. But when I get to the immigration in Skipo, you know, I won't, but you wouldn't tell me. Ah, it's very nice. Yeah, okay. My identity changes. What will reveal me is what I do and what I say. Ghanaians will like speaking P, Mekoda, Mekwaba. But when you read the immigration, you speak Mekoda, Mekwaba, nay, you speak the language that, that the, the immigration officer asks you the question in, right? Who land drive in Netherlands? Oh, six months. Six months. I don't know how to come about how this. Oh, excuse me. You understand each other. That moment, your identity has been revealed. And the ball. What we shall be has not been revealed yet. But we will know him when he is revealed. We shall be like him. Shall be like who? Like who is the him there? Is Jesus the son of God? So you shall be like him. So you are not like him yet because you are doing too much on God. You are standing too much. Nothing bothers you about the kingdom of God. No. When he says came, he was serious and committed to God's job. What about you? He said you are his son, daughter. That you are doing what Jesus said. He said you are you have not yet been revealed yet. And stop boasting. Let's continue. Ephesians 2 11 says, <laughs> watch the scripture very well. Eh? Therefore, remember that you. Hmm. You, you were once a Gentile. You were once a foreigner. You, in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made by the flesh by the hands. That, <laughs> that 
time you were without Christ, when Christ was not yet in the scene, you were without him. Now you dear you and you can kill. What happened after then? You were even aliens. I'm watching an alien film. What comes into your mind? Scary. People you can't even identify. One ear is like that. One mouth is like that. You are aliens. What next again? And strangers. All these words are letting you know who you were. She would cheer us. Otherwise, you don't know where the next step is going to be like. You will say, You. You were once without Christ. I hope by Christ to know what you are doing is even worse than when you were without Christ. So, where is the grace abused? Are you following me? I hope I'm not rushing. No. We were not without hope. All hope was gone because God called only Israel. So you are my priceless possession, my jewels. Mm, I love you, nation. Oh God, what about us? God, what about us? We had no hope. All hope was gone. And there arose a man. God became a man out of himself. He said, go to them. And then now we are grafted in him. When we, we are grafted, we are not even doing what we're supposed to do. The verse 13. That's where Christians are making the mistake. He said, now in Christ, you who were once, you who were once, were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Why did I paint that word near there? Did the blood of Christ brought us to heaven? No. Read the verse again. He has brought us where? Near. I'm going to my brother's house. He lives in number 14. When I read number 12, I stopped. Am I near his house? Yes. Have I entered his house yet? No. The grace and the grafting has brought you near. But you have not entered yet. So be careful. The distance between you and Satan is very short. He can come in at any time. He has brought you near. If he has brought you near, what should you do then? I'm looking for house number 14. I've read number 12. What should I do? Oh, by the grace. I'm almost there. Oh, by the grace. Oh, by the grace. Well, let me take one glass after one glass. I'm saying by the grace. I'm gonna. Oh, by the grace. Let me smoke one. Oh, by the grace. Let me have a fridge. Oh, by the grace. Oh. Why don't you strive to go on to number 14 and finish the journey? So once upon a time, people came to Jesus and asked him, Jesus, are the people you are going to save a very few people? Normally, if you ask your question, wouldn't you say yes and no? Jesus said, strive, pray, strive to enter. The grace has brought you near. Number 12, 14 is there. And number 12, no, 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 we should keep Oh, by the grace, oh, by the grace, oh, by the grace, oh, by the grace. You are not married, you do it five times a week. Oh, by the grace, you have been saved. You love him, but you hate him behind his back. Oh, by the grace. The grace has brought you near, but you are not there yet. So, when you read Luke 13 22, he said, Let me jump to the yellow one. People were asking him, He says, People are you are going to save, I said, A few people. He says, Told them, He said, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many will see you. They will seek to enter, but they will not be able. He said, strive, he said, pray, not baby. Back in those days in Ghana, when you are looking for a, a trust to go to house or to go home after school, while we're going to lie, you see why everybody will be rushing to get to the car. To... Everybody wants to get home on time. Me and pray. We'll be cool. No, no you will be free. Hey! You have explained before, right? That's what you call pray. Nashim. Strive and enter. Because the grace has brought you near. But if you do her, then we say, ah. Oh, sister, you know, I'm mad about I like the way you look. Oh, sister, the way your hair is like, it's like a silky hair. Oh, this is, this is human hair or Brazilian. <laughs> By the way you are. Oh. 
Oh, sister. In fact, your shoe. It's like Zara own. I can buy you three, you know. But the management will be lying. But elder, oh no, God will save by the grace. Oh, by the grace, He has saved us. Don't worry. After everything, I can even deliver you. The grace will come. Deliver who? See, the grace has brought you near. But John says, strive to enter. We have become lazy Christians these days. We don't want to pray. We don't want to say our Bible. You want to enter heaven like that? No. That's where over there is no time. 24 7 is the same. And you want to sleep? Can you sleep there? No. Pray, strive. The grace is there for you. It has brought you near. Now, have you seen your future, uh, your, your, uh, your past? We are once known by them. And the grace has drafted you in. He has brought you near. Let me relax. After I'm near, you don't know when you die. Let's continue. I, 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 are you learning something? I hope I'm not. You know I'm Let's see. Should the grace abound for us whilst we sin? Paul said, Romans 6, verse 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace should abound? Hell no. Because of the grace, oh, oh, oh. Brother Ephraim, let's go and do some chaka drinking by, you know, yeah, that you know, we go to God will save us by the grace. The Bible said, if you are saved by the grace, oh, Oh, yes, it's true. Oh, then let me join you there to the club, Phil. Yeah? Go and do everything that you want to do. He said, should we stay in sin <coughs> because the grace is abound? God forbid. Your mother says, sleep at 8.30. What is your mother at 8.30? Prepare your children every now and then. As long as you are under your mother and father's roof, you are still a child. No more because I you be any. Uh-uh. Quit it. Otherwise, you are abusing the grace. Do I have time? Okay. Are you there? Once I know see. <laughs> but the grace, I've seen you today. I'm happy. <laughs> How shall we say that? We are there to sin, but no longer live there in. So, brothers and sisters, if we say heaven is our destination, we should not abuse the grace. Amen. 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 Today is your grace day. Today. The question is why today but not tomorrow? Who can answer? Me? Eh? Nobody knows tomorrow. Oh, Jesus Christ, they said he was coming when I was a baby. Oh, man, come on, a long time they said he was coming, he's not coming. If he, if he was in, uh, uh, somebody would say blasphemy or things like that, my heart would be pounding inside of me. Even if he is coming with church shop and now he has come, ah, uh, please let's think. Hey! We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. He has grafted you into the tree. Don't be grafted there in vain. This, I continue with the verse. He says, in an acceptable time, verse 2, I have heard you. In the day of salvation, I have helped you. Who can spare the help over there? Spell it for me. H E L P E. You get it. So when you go to English, we say past tense. I have helped you. That my wow. I have brought you near. I have helped you. Past tense. The rest is up to you. That's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? I want to go to number 14, but now I'm number 12. Instead of you to strive and enter, you don't know joke. But I'm for, you don't know when tomorrow will come. So he said, today, the verse says further. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now. Not tomorrow, not any of such you for now, not new. Now, but then the plans you have in your mind to do on Monday afternoon, maybe to you know what I mean? Yeah. No, now change it because we are now crafted in. Don't abuse the grace. 
Because some people refused it. You accepted it. You are grafted in it. Therefore, don't abuse it. Are you going somewhere? Are you angry with me? No. Of course, you don't have to. I've said that you're wrong. No. Let's move on then. Without the stem, the branch is nothing. If you put a tree there, and we chop the stem, what will happen to the, the, the branches? Nothing. So John 5, 1 and 2 says, I am the vine. Who is speaking here? Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Say, I am the vine. My father is the vine dresser. We have had the word of He chopped the small, small weed. He pruned the trees and dressed the tree nicely. Ah. So the boy somebody step into the farm say, oh, what a beautiful farm. Mm. But my father would check the tree and say, ah, this tree branch has been there for years. There is no pineapple coming from it, and pear coming from it, and marble coming from it. What's going to happen? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, what does he do? What does he do? What does he do? What does he do? Continue from what does he do? Are you afraid? He does what? You are afraid he will take you out. That's why you don't want to say it. Huh? He will take it and he will chop it off. Any branch grafted in that does not bear fruit. Chop it off. The question is, what fruit am I bearing? Israel says, we don't want to receive this man. We don't want to, it's not God. We can yes, we are saying, oh, we want to receive him. We are our Jesus. He has given the right to become his child. But your right as a son or daughter will have not been revealed yet. Not yet, oh, until you reach your destination. So how can you go there while you are relaxing? That's why he said strive to enter. You say, oh, let me relax and do what I'm doing once more. After I'm still young, 25. <laughs> Today is a certain time. Today. Tomorrow might be too late. Might be too late. Mm -hmm. Say grace, grace, grace. But people, you were once not Israelizing. You are black like me. When you stand beside an Israelite and see who the color is from, the first year, you see it. Even outwardly, you are disqualified. What have, what makes us one in common in Father Abraham is the same faith we share. When you go there and they are, they are they are praying by the wailing wall. You marvel. And you pray, you pray five minutes, you fall down on your bed, Tim. I know somebody, uh, the, 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 the husband called me some time ago. Whenever they are doing a uh, morning devotion or pray before, my wife will be doing like this, and uh, Tim. I said, no, it's not witchcraft. No witchcraft is causing her to do that. You know, we like uh, attributing everything to the witch. If you think, she goes out of that and she will fall asleep. Stand or sit and pray. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says we should strive. Christianity is not an easy thing. Otherwise, Jesus would not have said strife. If you are saved by the grace, why, why should you strive then? And then any are home. No. He said the blood has brought us near. But he are been. Now we are close to heaven, brothers and sisters. We are very close. We are very, very, very close. So if out of your own recklessness, stubbornness, pride, I must swear, I must say, those things cause you not to reach number 14, your destination, the best show, Papa. Gonna prepare you. That day I'll be up there. I always tell my wife, huh, you, if you don't, I'm going there, me and my mother, you're gonna have some fun up there. You just uh, follow this once more. Yes, I'll be there. Let me see every one of you there. Service begins at 9, 9.30. Be here. Strive. We are praying together. Be part. Strive. We are fasting together. Six o'clock is the end of the fasting. And the man of God said, even if you can't, quarter, 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 Twelve. Ah, ah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and even that 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, put the uh, rice on the bowl, water beside. <laughs> You walk out by the living room. <laughs> Instead of you to pray. 
45. They want to look at clay. Tell them what I'm No, I thank you. No, I thank you. But this very moment, what you're giving to me. As I break my fasting. <laughs> Was it pray? He will say, pray, strive. The picture I gave to you right now, you are rushing to pick up the bus to go. Yeah, we, we don't we don't rush for tram. You get the tank you enter. If you one person, the tram will drive off. Go back home. That's why I say, if you want to go nowhere, go back to Uchi, go Uchi. Go back to your how do you say that? Your before. Uh -huh. Go back to your roots. We are once not part of Israel. But Adam brought us there. Amen. If the Adam has brought you there, you are now grafted in. So don't go, I am a child of God. I am a, yes, you are, but you are not revealed yet. You have been brought near. Therefore, strive to enter. Amen. If you are angry, sit down. If you are not angry, be on your feet and let's pray. Amen. 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 I want you to close your eyes this very moment and give the utmost thanks for your hearts to our God, the Father, and the loving Father, who didn't want to see you wasting away, but He had mercy on you, and then He crafts you in. Thank Him that He has spoken to you in such a way. Somebody begin to thank God. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. Most high God, Father, this afternoon we thank Him. We thank You for Your mercy and Your grace that you have given unto us. We honor you for your loving kindness, Master Jesus. That we who were once aliens, we who were once cast away, we who were once afar off, we who were once strangers, we who were once without hope, by your glory, Father, today, you have raised us. Father, I thank you. I thought I was wasted away, but you have raised me in you. I thank you that you have reminded me oh, of the destination ahead of me. I thank you that today you have revealed to me that you are my son. Father, I thank you and I bless you. We are praying. The Bible said, should we stay in sin so that grace may be abundant for us? God forbid. We are abusing the grace. You're going to talk to your God today. Tell God and God, in any way that I've abused your grace, still doing the things that I don't have to do. Father, forgive me. Make it a prayer. Let's begin to pray. Let's pray. Father, today I pray. You have by your grace grafted me in you. That through your righteousness and power, I shall be revealed, Lord. Therefore, this very day, Lord, I pray. Whichever way, through pride and stubbornness, I have abused your grace, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Don't cast me away from you, Lord. But continue to grasp me. Give me the power to bear fruit, Lord. No one I can, no one I will. But you yourself, Lord, will trust me within me. I thank you, Father. For the picture we saw, we were just a branch wasting away. But he grafted us in him. And he said in the book of John that without him, we can bear no fruit. Without the stem, the branch alone can bear fruit. You are going to ask your God. I don't know the kind of fruit you want to bear. Tell him to work through you to bear good fruit. Let's make it a prayer. Let's pray. Somebody begin to pray. Begin to pray for good parents' spirit. It's the spirit that will bear fruit in you. It's not what you want. It's the spirit that will bear the fruit you want, that you desire. 